But I'm making this video now because I think that things have changed. And part of the reason I think that is because in 2016, my older videos started being viewed less and less. I mean, I'm talking about my greatest hits. They were going along at a steady state, getting roughly the same number of views every month. And then in 2016, they started to very steadily decline. You know, in the past, it would be normal to get a majority of your views in the first week. But now it's more like the first day. Wow, that's, that's actually kind of sad. The, the whole idea of YouTube passive income is kind of dead unless you can automate your channel, which was part of the whole allure of like, make a bunch of great content. And if you sit on that catalog, you'll get passive income for life. But I see this too now. It's like, it's so weird. And, and everyone's so used to it now. You don't get recommended views. Like you don't get videos in your recommended that are like two days old. It's always from that day. Even from channels you're not subscribed to, like they never show you videos that are like two years old. And every time they do, it it's like, pointed out as like a the algorithm blessed us once again with this video like it's it's shown as like an occasion for like when the algorithm boosts a video that's like not particularly new because it's such a rare occasion that like people notice it, it the, all the comments are like that when really i feel like youtube should not discriminate between older and newer videos but then the next day almost no one is watching this video educational and other high quality evergreen content and it would have hurt newsy time sensitive videos. yeah yeah that's right it hurts newsy time sensitive trendy videos and it helps evergreen educational kind of content which is why YouTube should not bias towards newer videos it shouldn't try to overcompensate it should focus on the the click-through rate and all that stuff of the video by itself and not worry about recency it just, it, it creates a platform with better quality stuff. But then again, YouTube does not care about quality anymore. Look at all the Mr. Beast clones that they promote. Look at like the fact that like you go on like YouTube's Twitter, like they're out here like promoting Sniper Wolf and all this stuff. Like YouTube corporate does not care about quality. Of course, naturally the classic, I believe I already streamed going like through cool math games and like a bunch of different games on it because um, it was going to be shut down. And I knew cool math games is never going to be like shut down, shut down, but the original, like the, it needed to evolve because Flash was going to go out of business or whatever, you know? Or not out of business, but all the browsers were going to stop supporting Flash. Bam. New games? What is all this? This looks like Catan. Wow, look at this. Atari Breakout. Actually, I think if you just search on Google, Atari Breakout. Actually, no, it's not on Google. You have to search Google Images. It, did, it, should, it should be like this. It should show up like that. I don't know what happened. Yeah, this is the game, but I don't... I don't know why it's not on Google Images anymore. I don't know what happened. Wait, there is no I'm feeling lucky anymore. I can't click at the I'm feeling lucky button. I, guess, I mean, this is exactly how it worked. I guess Google removed it. I wonder who make, who like manages this site. El Goog. I know about the site. Um, but I remember like a lot of the things that that's on El Goog used to be on just straight up Google. Like uh, Google Gravity or whatever, where everything would just like drop. Ayo, hey, yeah, at the top, boys. There we go, completed. And then it goes on to the next levels and then it'll add layers and all that stuff, but I'm not trying to do all that. See, back in the day, this was not actually El Goog. This was Mr. Doob. Look, 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 Mr. Doob experiments with Google. See this? Since 2009, colors have created amazing experiments using Google, Chrome, Android, whatever. These kinds of weird things. Yeah, like this, the Google Sphere, Google Gravity, all that stuff. Like this stuff was originally all by Mr. Doob, which is like Google, basically. But now it's Elgoog, which is like confusing. I don't know who runs this. And they kind of archive all this stuff. It's so crazy because I, I literally have not heard the word, like the, the name Mr. Doob since I, would be, since I was like 10. There was a lot of these like random, like board button, like random stuff like this that would just like, it was just, it was just mindless entertainment on the internet before TikTok. You just click it and then it takes you to like, world's dumbest game. Game? I think it's game. How long can you hold the button? Oh, you lose. Oh, this one is actually a good game. This one is a good game right here. If you want to get good, you have to start predicting. See that? You have to start predicting where things are going to be. This is actually the part that makes the game really tricky because eating the ones that are littler than you um, makes you a little bigger, which makes it harder to avoid projectiles. Ooh, that was luck. That was luck. That was straight luck. 
Ah, oh, there was no way to survive that. There was nothing I could have done. Hey, what the hell is this? There's no way. This dude's cheating. There's a lot of websites like this, like the useless web. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Endless Horse, which was like a website that you go on once and you'll never go on again for the rest of your life. This is, I think it's some like JavaScript generated. I don't know why they don't have SSL, but I think it's some JavaScript generated thing where it's literally just, you could just keep scrolling and scrolling. It's a very lightweight piece of code. Like it actually is endless. You could just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And when you're a little kid, these little things are like fascinating because you're, I'm trying to understand how these things work. And you imagine websites to be like these tangible things. And you're like, what? How could it have no end? And I think the only reason why they did this is so that they can actually use the dot horse domain. I think this is like the only useful dot horse domain ever used. My horse. Like from that one Sky Does Minecraft video. That was a great video, man. Is, do these websites really get like no traffic anymore? Because none of them have SSL. You would think that like even even if they get like, you know, 10 viewers a month, like they would have SSL, right? It's literally like it's free. It's free. it's actually free. It's not even like $10 one time payment. Greg Rudder's definitive list of the 99 things you should have already experienced on the internet unless you're a loser or old or something. Well said. At the time, Charlie the Unicorn and the Charlie that bit the finger had to have been like the two most famous Charlies in the world. I wonder where that Charlie is now. Wait, the video is private. The Charlie bit my finger video is private. Why? Why? What happened? I know this one's not private. Ah, uh, you guys. This is better be pretty, pretty freaking, freaking important. important. Is the meadow on fire? No, Charlie. Charlie. We found a map to, to Candy, Candy Mountain. Mountain. Candy Mountain, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. Charlie. We're going, going to Candy, Candy Mountain. Mountain. Come with us, Dude, Charlie. How? How? This is so annoying to listen to. How was I not annoyed when I was little? I was so, like, immersed. It'll be an adventure. We're going on an adventure, Charlie. Dude, these guys, like, they, they're pissing me off right now, bro. Like, shut up. But back then, I was just like, I was just like, oh, a story's unfolding, you know? Nothing seemed out of the ordinary here. Hey, bro, what is this? Meat spin, two girls, one cup. I mean, goats, like, that. Is, that's probably just Google Images, whatever. But Lemon Party, I remember Lemon Party. I don't. I, th I think I remember Tub Girl. I remember people, like, I feel like Blue Waffle should be here as well. And also, Obey the Walrus, if I'm not mistaken. There's a few more things you could you could put on here. That are, like, probably essential to understand that era of the internet. And what the fuck are we watching, man? Like, you think about it, bro. The dark web, nowadays, is just like what the clear web used to be. Bro, I don't know if you guys remember this. This this popped off and this became like a thing when Watch Dogs first came out. That's when everyone realized it and they ended up shutting it all down. You can still find it. But back then it was such a huge thing. Like hella unsecured security cameras, like security cameras that you could just like watch on, on the, not on YouTube, but like on just like random websites. When Watch Dogs popped off, the websites would have like millions of security cameras. So they'd find nice little algorithms, nice little, uh, you know, worms, botnets. But back then there weren't that many security cameras, but the security cameras that people did hack into, it was early enough to where nobody considered internet security like a priority. So they would be like legit cameras, at like corporate offices, construction sites, all that stuff. And even nowadays, actually, like I, I remember like a, a couple of years ago, there was like a scandal where it was literally just, if you put in the right URL, which it was tricky to find the URL, but it was on the internet, clear web, unencrypted, even when the people like with the uh, web like security camera, even when they opted out of like having their thing be stored in the cloud or whatever, like, they, oh, I don't want my footage stored in the cloud. I just want to store it on the SD card. It was like, no, their security cameras were still storing it in the cloud and they were not just storing it. They were literally just streaming it live online. It's like, bro, can you, can you not even trust like security camera companies? Like the one thing. And actually the whole, like, it was a different thing because back then, Everyone was just about like playing games and things like that. When I got into the school system, I could have changed my grades, but I didn't, it was not like, it, it never crossed my mind. Hey, I should change my grades. It was just, can I put myself in classes with cool people or with the girls that I like? And back then it was the same thing. We just wanted to, cause they would give controls on the websites. Like we wanted to like go around up, down, left, right and zoom in and zoom out. Like we would just treat these security camera websites like a game. It's so interesting cause nobody, Things about it that way. I think before watchdogs, like kids, right? Kids our, like, I mean our age, like kids that were at the time like 10, 11, 12 years old, they don't actually think hacking is like a, bad in any way. Like they, they don't, you could go to like a group of like 10 year old kids 
and tell them and ask them like is hacking illegal and like half of them wouldn't even know maybe now it's different because of all the paradigm shifts that have happened because of all like the digital warfare but b- before watchdogs like i remember like there was no there was no thought in people's minds about like oh hacking is this like deeply immoral like you shouldn't do it it was just like part of the game of like being on the internet and especially if you make it that easy look if you if you put your security cameras on indexable and and thus searchable urls you're you're asking for people to watch the cameras like these thoughts were not crossing our mind back then of like what can we do maliciously to hack it was just like like i think about it like bro we could have exposed people for cheating like we could have like collected ransom money from that we could have done it we could have blackmailed people but we just wanted to have fun if i remember correctly the website owners like even though they were like hackers right trying to just like you know steal malicious information they were good people bro because at one point there was a bunch of uh baby security cameras you know like baby monitors and then they took them all off the website hacking was done by everyone good bad whatever it was just a part of what it is it wasn't this like oh negative connotation thing it was just like oh this guy hacked these security cameras is he a good guy or not it's still up in the air we're not just going to immediately assume guilt go after him oh he's such a he should be arrested he should like make some fucking mudahar video some some like moist critical this person is obviously doing a wrong thing and it is bad and i'm going to tell you how bad it is and it's so obvious but i'm going to keep explaining it repeatedly over and over and over again but with some clever wordplay so that way you don't realize i'm saying the same thing over and over again non-stop so i can pat out this video and and even though i'm uh, making it appear as if it's self-evident the the morality of the situation i need to feel the need to constantly repeat myself um because it's actually not self-evident and, and we're just going to ignore the the dichotomy and the contradiction of myself right there it's like back then nobody felt the need to do that kind of shit nobody felt the need to just like go jump into things that they don't know anything about and be like ah oh, guilty innocent whatever i shouldn't say that many people did i was a kid so i wouldn't know i wasn't involved with pe- the kind of people that did that oh yeah hacking Hacking sucks now, bro. The community sucks. And nowadays, it's literally... It, it's still it's still simple to hack in some ways. All you gotta do is, like, no username admin. Password, probably also admin. I actually have this video saved right here. This is not that long ago compared to what I'm talking about. Fucking skids. This is crazy because nowadays, the whole dropshipping community... Like does this, if you think about it, you take the same logic, right, that you find in other industries. Video streaming, for example. Whatever happens on Twitch eventually pops off on YouTube like a couple of years, few years later, right? Like, for example, everyone was saying simp on Twitch in like 2016, 17, all that stuff. And then only when iDubs came through as a simp, only then did people in the rest of the internet start, start saying the word simp. But it was like, in the world of finance, the black hat community is just a few years ahead of the white hat community. And by white hat, I, I also mean black hat because that's the majority of finance anyways. But I mean what you find on not so tech savvy websites like Instagram. So it's like back then people were faking like, oh, look at all the Instagram usernames I have. Look at all the domains I have. Look at all the shit that I bought, right? And they were using that to basically uh, build credibility to sell eBooks. And now people sell courses and all the proof that they show is like, look at all the cars that I bought, the houses that I bought on Instagram. It's like, if you wanna, if you wanna know what the next trend is gonna be, like, oh, drop shipping, oh, social media marketing agency, whatever. If you wanna know what the next wave is gonna be and how to capitalize off of it, you should get involved in like the hack forums ish, you know, all those WordPress templates, like those kinds of websites. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy because the people that uh get into this kind of stuff are usually behind the scenes actually a lot deeper when they're younger like for example um, i mean i shouldn't say the names i really shouldn't but uh like there's this esports executive and nobody knows about these things really or even like phase for example Faye's like my fucking best friend, you know? Like he does all this shit, drop shipping and all that. He makes good money. He just bought his second car. He just bought a Corvette, you know? He bought his own house when he was 21 years old. And keep in mind, they lived in a one bedroom apartment. They're all him, a single mom. And then he came up and did all this shit. 
And he was doing all this dropshipping stuff before everyone. But you think about it, he was also doing this other shit before everyone. Because he's actually the one that introduced me to, like, leak forums and all these other, you know, like, leak websites to get these fucking accounts and all this shit and to flip the combo list and all that. I wasn't into the, the breaching side of it. The leaking side of it was really nice because it was a lot of software, a lot of different tools, things like that. And that's what FaZe was into. But I didn't, I was not so... I wasn't driven and ambitious to like accomplish the world the way he was. So I actually gravitated more towards the raiding side of it. That's why raid forms is, is my first love and always will be. Rest in peace. It's like I think about it now. A lot of people that are doing this shit, a lot of people that are doing drop shipping and all that stuff, actually did like when you get to know them and they talk about like the shit they did in the past, they really were on these like hack forum type sites when they were little. If you want to see something real from back in the day, look at this shit. We were just, we were trolls, bro. We'd find videos like this and we would just fucking laugh at them on Discord, or not on, on Skype together. Man, what the fuck was I doing? I was laughing at people who got scammed. But bro, I got scammed. There's a lot of, like a lot of big, like famous people, actually famous people who are like closeted, like these kinds of forum users, you know? But it's not like that they're closeted it's the opposite end. It's the masculine end of like of like one of these kids wanting to go on like Barbie.com or something like that or Polly Pocket or something, you know? On one hand, you have so masculine that it's illegal, right? And kind of unempathetic. We were literally laughing at people that got scammed. But on the other hand, you have so overly empathetic that it's fake. But it's not only legal, it's pushed by the law. It's it's compelled to do. LGBT, oh, compelled speech. Com oh, you must use these pronouns, all that shit, right? So it's like extreme masculine and extreme feminine. And a lot of the closeted people are on the extreme feminine side. It's not closeted out of fear. It's closeted out of, like, it's nobody's business, you know? It's, it's out of love. It's out of, like, the safety of others. You guys remember this shit? This looks different from what I remember. I did not know who Harley Quinn was back then. I obviously knew who Barbie was. Everyone knows movie just came out. Bratz, Polly Pocket, Strawberry Shortcake, Monster High. I got some of my taste in girls from, from this whole aesthetic right here. I didn't go on a lot of those websites, but I would see a lot of the girls go on it like in school. There's also Star Doll, if I remember correctly. I vaguely remember people saying Star Doll back then, but I don't ever remember anyone even going on this website. But what happened to Girls Go Games? This was actually a good website. If you were a child of the 2000s, you probably know Girls Go Games and I may even have child. fond memories of the site. I wanted to revisit this. I, I don't have that many fond memories, but I remember hell of people used it. <laughs> Snail Bob too. This this website was not bad for playing games. And girls love the fucking dress up games, dude. Holy shit, dude. They're really, like, you look at, like, the way kids play games. There really is a difference, like, even at, like, eight years old between guys and girls. Because these girls would spend hours just dressing up a, a fucking PNG. I wasn't doing this shit. I know this because the girls would show me. But at the same time, they'd not, like, you know how... You know how girls are when they're really little and they're not actually mature? They're kind of like, they're, they're, you know, they like, you know how dogs are where it's like, oh, I want you to take the ball and throw it. But at the same time, I don't want to give it to you, you know? So it's like they chase after you because they want that attention. But at the same time, they want the attention in a way where you think that they don't want that attention. Pop Tropica was another one. But this one wasn't one of the ones that we play in school all that much. This one was one of the ones that, um, like, we play each other's houses and stuff. This one actually was a bit of a time commitment. If you wanted to, like, understand how fleshed out the world was and everything, you, you actually had to put some time into it. Bro, this, this whole website is just filled with ads. Wasn't there a way to roll, if I remember correct? I think, yeah, there were, yeah, 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 you could just do that. That's crazy that people still use Pop Tropica. It's still online. Okay, this looks really different from what I remember. You know what's crazy? I think my mom still has one of my webkins. So Neopets was huge, but webkins, webkins was small, but we played it more at our school in particular. I, I went to a private school and it was like all, you know, white rich people. I only went there from pre-K to second grade. I went there for four years and webkins were mad expensive. Look, look. Original toy to life game, right? It's like this shit had mad potential, but it's like they didn't go all out. This is like this was crypto zoo before crypto zoo. This also looks really different. I have a little dog, like a little golden retriever webkins. Um, it was given to me as a gift. I got a few webkins as gifts because they were really expensive. We didn't want to get any, but people would give them to me. Damn, that really because I, I was too little to know 
what everybody else is also doing it might have been like a silly bands type thing where it was really hype for like one month and then everyone just forgot about it because that's kind of what it felt like it, it, that's what it might have been that once again look no ssl and another one that doesn't have ssl let me just look up last meals it's so weird how it's like there's no like official website for it because this was like a super interesting thing you got to think about the philosophy behind that behind just giving someone their last meal in the first place right giving someone the option to have whatever they want for their last meal what's the point you know i get the point because we're all gonna die anyways so what's the point of doing anything if we're all gonna die um that's not there's no way to look at like whether or not you should make a decision about someone but it's like you would think that if like these people are like hated the oh death by electric chair we have to sentence them to death right you would think that that people would not want them to have a last meal but at the same time i think there's sort of like a gladiator style sort of sadistic amusement people get from knowing that people will have their last meal like they could choose whatever they want really you chose a bunch of fucking vegetables what a loser this person yeah this person deserved to get the death row if they were going to eat choose this i feel like this should be a test I feel like if you choose the right kinds of foods, then you should not be, you should be given like a, a reduced sentence or something like that, you know? Like this, this is the right answer right here. A fucking bag of Jolly Ranchers. If, if you choose this, you should not, you should be like, okay, you're, you don't have to go do your execution. You get to be released. You get to go free into the world. And then of course there's these, you know, people that will be forgotten throughout time, justice, equality, and world peace, and it's just nothing. Look at him, look at how like staunch and stoic he is, and he thinks he's gonna like, you know, stand for this and make a difference in the world, but really it's it's all for naught. Ah, an ice cream sandwich. I would include this, dude. I would include an ice cream sandwich as well. I'd put all this stuff on there. Is there no limit to what you can do? Like a good meal would be all three of these guys combined. Like a bunch of chicken, coke, uh, cookies, one cup of tea from tea bag, six chocolate cookie. I guess that's a tea bag right there. I get a tea, except I'd make it like the Indian tea, like the chai, and then I'd have this. One jar of dill pickles. Man, I don't know how to feel about this guy. A whole, you didn't ask for like a, you know, little container. You asked for a whole damn jar. I feel like the only real route to take with this guy, where is he looking, bro? I feel like the only real route to take with this guy is a public a uh, guillotine beheading declined damn look at him bro this dude this dude looks like he belongs on death row i don't know maybe it's just the picture maybe it's the aesthetic of this picture and it's also like the orange jumpsuit and all that but like damn he looks like a predator i'm like getting immersed i'm like man i wonder what it would be like to be there or eat that food i wonder why he picked that i'm like thinking about all these things it's such a interesting like little rabbit hole to dive into and the website isn't even up anymore. Wait, is it? No, look, yeah, see, it's not up anymore. It's just this fucking domain, like, direct, redirected to one of these people that pay ICANN for um, advertising. March 31st, 2070. And, of course, the second countdown. That's super interesting that they have this. This is, this is a really cool website. It, like, this is not the kind of website that I would expect to be, like, a trendy kind of thing, like how it was back then. This is another, I'm not, I'm not actually going through like just websites that I just feel like going through because there's a lot of, you know, death related websites. This was actually something that was popular at that time in the early 2000s. Not in the early 2000s actually. This is popular in the late 2000s. This is popular in like 2008, 2009, I think, something like that. It does look different from what it used to be, but this is generally like this is the, the, the spirit of the website is the same as it always was. So I have 46 years, which means I'm a third of the way done if I just take this at face value, right? But really, I'm actually kind of halfway done. The second half, second half I gotta work on, second half is gonna be tricky, but I'm pretty happy with the first half. Because in the first half, bro, in the first half I got to, I got to play on websites like Congregate. Like this was a thing back then. But it's like, you think about the word congregate, right? It's a congregation. It's a bunch of, it's a community. The line is blurred between creator and, you know, consumer. Every cr creator also consumes because they're doing it for the passion and, and they're doing it, they're, they're creating because they love what they consume. They're not just some executive in some movie studio that doesn't even watch movies, that doesn't even like movies. Every consumer also creates because the barrier to entry on creating is so low. And, and you can create such great art as a result and people get inspired when they play great games. I mean, Flash is dead, so. Newgrounds was a better website though. Newgrounds was significantly better. In fact, it might have been the best. Ninja Kiwi was up there for sure. It was actually no, Ninja Kiwi only had balloons. Mini Clip was up there. Addicting Games was up there. But then again, Addicting Games, Addicting Games had Party Racers, which won like the Addicting Game of the Year that one year, which wasn't even all that addicting to be honest. 
Armor Games was interesting because people were not going on Armor Games like that. But the reason why I think New Gra- Newgrounds would be like, if you were to rank them, I think it would be the only like S tier is just because of what it did for the community, because of how many people it inspired, because of how, because of how, because the mechanics of the website was more like a social media for it was more of a social media website for game developers. That's what it was. Armor Games was interesting. I think it might have been our more like OUR games. The thing is, I don't think a lot of people went on this website. I didn't, I don't hear much about it. I didn't hear anything about it other than it was Miss Holden's class, fourth grade Jackson Elementary. Other than that class, outside of that class, I've never heard of it once. So I think in general, like across the United States or whatever, across the world, I think this was actually not really a popular website. It kind of flew under the radar. This is a nice little tower defense idol puzzle. Like this, th- these are the kinds of genres that you'd want on here. There was this one like bubble game that was on here, which was a classic. It was, it was like one of those dot io games before io games were a thing. Like you go, you're a bubble, and then you go from area to area, up, down, left, right, and you choose your path, and you attach more weapons onto you, and you fight the things. It, it was, it was like a, it was a really interesting game actually. It had interesting mechanics, but once you knew the path to go down. It had no replay value because you just became OP, which is like immensely satisfying. Like to have that carnal desire to be like an OP invasive bacterium, you know, like that to allow that to manifest in like the deepest part of your brain. It, it was really, really satisfying. Just like the same way, you know, Agario is, but uh, it had no replay value. I'm trying to think if there were any other, like, I, I know there were a bunch of websites we used to go on when we were little. I, I have a lot of memories of actually this website called Peter Answers. So the way that it worked is like, you had to put the petition, which is like, Peter, please answer. And then you ask your question. And I think the whole concept of this is like, it's hard to explain to kids, but you're just, you're stating what you want Peter to do basically. The real tricky part was the fact that like, sometimes you didn't really need to type that much, but you needed to type like a little bit, right? And people had their own little ways of going around it. And you could ask like, who is a Afraz gonna marry? This website used to have a dark mode, by the way. It used to be default dark mode. Oh, look, Emma Watson. Cool. And so you could put whatever you want. And then somebody would be like, oh, but you, what, what, that was something, no, what about the petition? Why, why are you typing that in the petition? And you could be like, what do you mean? Peter, please, like, you type what it sucked my dick, you know, you could type in whatever you want over here. But you have to type in something that, you know, like, and people will come up with excuses, like, you have to request for Peter to actually answer your question and all that stuff. The way that it works, obviously, you can look it up on Google, or if you use any of the websites that are like this, you just hit period, and then you could type in whatever you want, answer the following question. Yeah, and then that's basically what happens. The thing is, the reason why I explained why, like, the mechanism of Peter answers is because I, I experienced the time where I'm like, yo, how is that? How are you doing that? To like the older kids who were doing it, who were using it to trick me. And I used it to trick kids that were a year younger than me. And to this day, I never once told them how it works. I feel like, and we stopped talking after that. You know, we stopped talking when we were like 11, 12 or whatever. I never got the chance that otherwise, like if we were, if we would have been friends, they would have eventually found out, you know? I feel like some of them probably still don't know. So I feel like it's my duty to relay that information. That nigga going to hell. Did you ever hear about that guy that decided to eat a whole fucking plane and then he did it? He ate a plane? Yeah, he ate a plane. What the fuck? Like there was some fucking like (laughs) junkyard plane or whatever and then he took it apart into like little pieces and ate it over the course of like a year or two or some shit. Oh, he ate other shit too. Bicycles, shopping carts, televisions, to whoever may hear it. This is super interesting right here, by the way. You can go to Plane Crash Info, Last Words. See, this is another one of those like morbid. There's a lot of morbid sites made made back in the day. These are the last words just before plane crashes. Ma, I love you. Charlie, Charlie, come on, Charlie. You're going to crash into Candy Mountain, Charlie. Get it up. That's what she said. That's it. I'm dead. I wish there were audio recordings. Wow, I, Amy, I love you. I didn't think people were actually going to be saying this. I thought this was just like in the movies, you know? Oh, I love you, and then they die. I didn't know people actually felt compelled to do that. Wait a second. Allah Akbar? 1997? I rely on God. That really didn't work out for you. Maybe it did. I don't know. Some of us... I feel like some of us are straight pups, you know, just going around. Some of us, you know, maybe God needs to take some of us back, you know? Damn it, we're gonna crash. This can't be happening. And of course, the very last one is just fuck. I know, like, I'm smiling. That's the thing that happens. When I'm confronted by, like, really, like, deeply dark things, 
it's not I smile and I laugh, but not because I'm actually like sadistically enjoying what I'm reading or whatever. Like I laughed. I laughed when my dog died. I laughed when my grandpa died. Like I laugh at like things. I think it's a coping mechanism, honestly. This is another one of those things like board button and like, you know, uh, pointless websites or whatever. I think that useless websites, except it's all kind of like a it's it's all on the same website and it's all like this is actually I think this was I don't think they knew what they were doing but this was kind of like an ARG for back in the day like see there's like this kind of cryptic shit right here and there's like morse code <laughs> websites used to be really robust back in the days like emotion wise you know not every website's the same fucking same thing over and over and over again it's all just trying to sell you something all just packed with ads back then it's like websites were made with like the purpose of art Right, they're made like this website's gonna be for, to entertain. This website's gonna be to make you laugh. This website's gonna be for a gag thing that you could, you know, prank people with or show your friends. This website's gonna teach you some skill. This website's gonna show you some interesting facts. This website's gonna have some cool little game on it. This website's gonna scare you. This website's gonna make you see something that might give you an epilepsy test attack. You know, like a fucking epilepsy attack a uh, seizure you go on like all these uh, website like makers or whatever right like the website builders it's all either just e-commerce stores or like portfolios nobody makes interesting websites anymore man i feel like they should make like you know these rabbit hole youtube channels like frederick knudsen and uh blame it on jorge or whatever and uh barely sociable and all that stuff i feel like these and like nexpo in them uh, maybe not nexpo he's more horror I feel like one of these guys should make a video on Jim Punk because it was an interesting little ARG. And is worse than anything. Damn, look at this fucking like ray tracing, bro. Oh, this is Lego Ninjago. So this came out way after Lego Star Wars. Straightforward and eye catching. Now they destroyed it. They took what was once Damn. perfectly fine and trashed it. She put the vignette to and like the music. Anyone who was there during that time and that part of the internet, they knew what was gonna happen. Like this is this is not fooling any of us. Th this would fool adults and letting kids watch it. That's probably why this video is not age restricted, but somehow that's crazy that it's not. But it's like, you look at like where Donkey Kong's eyes are pointed and you look at the way that everyone is sort of drawn like with, with their physiognomy in mind and, and like the goofiness of the background and all that stuff. And you know what's happening. You know the kind of people that draw like this, the kind of people that animate like this, you know what they're up to. <laughs> Here I come. <laughs> it's like that's so that's so telling. That's so that's such a giveaway, bro. Like when you make something that's like blatantly for like the stereotypical white mom to be like, oh, oh, you you're just watching something innocent like that. Like when you make something like that, like if you're a real like non NPC and you see your kid watching something like that, oh, here I come. You'd be like, hey, why are you watching this garbage? Put on something real, you know. But when you go all the way down into like watching things that are just so safe that they're brain dead i mean you know what you're getting nowadays people watch it unironically like coco melon again another example of how the internet has just completely failed as, as a system but back then it was like it was an introduction into what the world had to offer knuckles it must be a mario he just he take racing too seriously this is he a... takes everything oh. too seriously whoa oh. i didn't even realize that <laughs> Bro, I did not get these jokes when I was little. Oh, this part. This part was so funny the first time I watched it, bro. This is- this had me dying, bro. The way that he says it, the way that he says it, it's like a reminder of like what you think of the video game, right? Like, yes, he, like the little way that he says it. You're, you're at this level of like, oh, this is what we're watching. And then you're back down. Oh, wait, this is what we're watching. Nope, we're back to here. Man, I, I did not realize how gory this video was. Luigi! Coming for you, nigga. Whoa, wait. They what put that nigga? on subtitles? I did not, I didn't think you could do that. Our history. So, you let get to go fast, fast huh? huh? I feel like that could have, that could have been animated a bit better. I caught it. Now it's mine and I can force it to do whatever I want. <laughs> Yo, like this kind of humor doesn't exist anymore. You can't make videos like this anymore. Suck my mushroom pimp. That was that was so cool, bro. I, like this guy understood kids. You put two and two together as a little kid of like 
cool things. And like, this is what you come up with. Mario Kart and guns. Why can't you get a gun from the item box? It's like these things that are so obvious, but like nobody who thinks of ideas, like, oh, well, what would I make for an interesting like Mario Kart animated video? Nah, you just think like a little kid. I always kind of expected this uh, video to get a sequel because of this part, you know? It felt like an unfinished story. Of course, this is the most replayed part right here. She still got the black eye. This shit was fucking heat, bro. I'm gonna sample this. 2012, this is hilarious. 2021, this is hilarious. This is a very uh, elegant music choice. It's only for the most sophisticated of viewers. Six months ago, isn't this the guy that made the duck song? Duck song, I are 13 million views. Why didn't I hear about this? Jesus, dude. If it, if, it, if it hit a billion views, I would not be surprised. Grapes? You think about it for a second, okay? We are all actually, the duck really influenced our personalities. We think we're based, right? We think that we're, we're so, we're based, really, we're not based on ourselves. We are based, but we're actually based on the duck. We are all secretly the duck deep down. Like if you think about it, right? All the OG kind of humor on there. And look at the humor that exists today, like trolling on Twitter and all that shit. This is all based off of the philosophy of the duck. This song came out when I was in kindergarten. I have such fond memories of me and my dad singing this song together with me playing the duck and him playing the lemonade stand guy. I distinctly remember acting out choreography of me waddling away and him shaking his fist laughing. Man, that's beautiful. He passed away in 2020, but this song always brings a smile to my face. I don't know if the creator reads the comments anymore, but thank you for making priceless memories between my dad and me. I will always treasure them. I'm liking that comment. No song articulates the struggles of customer service more than this one. The greatest thing I've ever laid ears on. I wish to pass this on to my children. They should carry it with them always. You know what? Like this is such a childish thing and if you show it to adults today, they wouldn't get it. I think about that and, and then I think about like what kids want. And I'm like, man, you know what? Maybe Coco Melon ain't so bad after all. Like I, I put myself in the mind state of a kid and I'm like, eh, it'll be fine. I have this urge to, oh, this is ruining the kids. This is keep this thing away from the kids. They shouldn't be watching this kind of thing. But it's like, bro, the shit that I watched when I was a kid, there's no way the shit that they watch today is going to be worse than that. Actually, I think the reason why I have qualms with, you know, like Coco Melon and all these other, you know, giant companies making kid-friendly content is they do it formulaically. They don't do it out of passion. And as a result, it's always like positive messaging. It's, it's like, oh, so positive, positive, positive. Like they never want to have people actually using their brain and thinking in any way that's like not black and white. And it's when videos are made with a passion and they chose, they resonate with people when they're made with a passion like this, they, they strike a balance because the world is not black and white where it's like, this is white, this is black, this is a good thing, this is a bad thing. You should be like this, you should not be like this. No, if you're too far on this side, it's actually black here, black here, and gray in the middle. Too much on either side is bad. You need to learn to find a balance. You can't always be overwhelmingly positive about everything. Oh, only positive vibes, positive vibes only. You know how many times I've heard that? If you have positive vibes only, you're only on this side, you're just as bad as negative vibes only. If you're saying, oh, we have to be safe, safety is the more priority, oh, we don't want to have any danger. If you're ultimately safe, you're not, you're dead. You're not even going to experience any life. If you're just, you want to be completely safe, stay inside, do nothing, don't talk to anyone, don't experience any kind of any of the world, don't interact with any other human being, don't look at anything, don't hear anything, don't see anything, don't speak anything. You might as well be dead at that point, as well as so much danger that you end up dying. These normies and Karens think that the world is black and white, so they like demand, oh, don't teach my kids that the world is more complicated than this. But when you teach them that, they resonate with it. And it's true. The world is more complicated. Sometimes when some something stupid happens and, and you get infuriated at something and, and you let it go and the catharsis hits, you can't help but laugh. When my brother's like, oh, you, why are you so negative? Why are you so negative? It's like, why can't we, why can't we be like all cordial and all that stuff? It's like, because we're not competitive. That's not the spirit of brotherhood. There's ultimate competitive and ultimate cooperation. And it's like, you want to find a balance in the middle. 
but you want to be way over here. And it's like, I want to bring it. I want to bring it here some more, right? And if you introduce a little bit of competition, the spirit of competition, that is the spirit of brotherhood, really, then it'll inspire everyone, you and me and everyone else around you and everyone in this whatever situation that you're in to find a balance. Oh, positive vibes only. Why can't you do? No, it's, it's much more complicated than that. It's gray. It's not black and white. It's not this thing is good. This thing is bad. It's this thing is bad. This thing is bad. But somewhere in the middle, there is some balance that we can strike that's a little bit a little bit more meaningful than extremely bad and that's all we can really hope to achieve and then just hope we get lucky i don't have to spell these lessons right all that's required for them to be taught is for people who are passionate about art to have the chance to make art that's all that it is and when you have these big fucking companies coco melon and all this bullshit on top being promoted by youtube You don't get that. But when it's like independent creators, Forest Fire 101, that's making this shit and it's like low quality like this, that's real shit. iPhone 2. This is is actually a perfect video if you think about it. This is a flawless YouTube video. Let the bodies hit the... The Wii phone. Come on, bro. People were just... People were just combining shit, bro. Just technology felt like such a magical thing back then that people were just throwing shit together. I mean, looking back at it, this probably wasn't in the best taste. This thing, this kind of thing can't exist today because it's like these kinds of videos, nobody would get, like, I believe this stuff. I believed it because where you people got their information from was other people. There was no ultimate god-like verifiable sage source like the internet where you could just google everything and just verify everything it was a beautiful world where people would tell you stories and you could actually believe them nowadays kids learn that santa isn't real when they're like four but back then the magic of life the magic of childhood just lasted so much longer how do they do do they photoshop this because this is a pretty damn impressive photoshop job Dolan Dark, good video, still holds up. This is the best one. This is the most iconic one right here. With the, This picture was everywhere, bro. I believed it was real. I'd go around showing people at school, look at the new Xbox, the X sphere, the game sphere. The game is spherical. Okay, so this guy, so this guy's not like a YouTube OG. He's not like, this is just, I'm, I'm putting this in here because I wanted to, uh, where's his, he privated all his videos. I wanted to like document, because this was, this was 2016, 20, 2016. I wanted to like show in case like YouTube terminated his channel, you know, I know he's like scared of like YouTube deleting his channel. Like he deleted the whole like, uh, he deleted his Minecraft Columbine video, which that was his best video, man. And then he deleted his, um, he deleted his waterboarding video, which that was also a great, really creative idea, you know? That's a, if you guys, if you guys want me to do a, if, if I hit a thousand subscribers, I'll do a waterboarding special. 1,000 subscriber waterboarding special. Sub for that. This is not like OG, but in case he deletes his channel, I just wanted to put this here just as like a record, you know? Beverly Hills, California. I'm a princess and you're not. So there. She's made entirely of red flags. I don't know what the hell Kanye was thinking. Like this alone removes Kanye from the GOAT discussion. The fact that he married Kim Kardashian. It's like Kim Kardashian is not the kind of girl that you marry. Kim Kardashian is not the kind of girl that you even show an ounce of respect to. I don't know why I'm taking this seriously. I should be focusing on like the fact that like, you know, I'm trying to like look at old webs, like how websites used to look so different back then. MySpace is really innovative. And MySpace, I feel like a lot of features that MySpace had are going to come back and be innovative again in the future. I'm calling it. You know, if you think about it, Pornhub was actually also a really innovative video sharing site. I'm being for real. They had they had dark mode on default way before you for years, years before YouTube, for like a decade maybe before YouTube. Not maybe. They had it over a decade before YouTube. And like everyone knew, everyone like everyone knows this too. I'm not like saying some like crazy like the way that thumbnails are picked and like the way that, uh, you know, when you hover over a video, it shows you the preview of the video, that kind of thing. I, I If I remember correctly, I think Pornhub was actually the first website to do that. Like, I don't think they popularized it. I think they were the first. And like um, showing the percentage, like like to dislike percentages. I think they were the literally the first website to do that too. Like people always dismiss it as like, okay, Pornhub was just like another part of the internet. Dude, the internet was built off of porn. Like people underestimate just how pivotal porn was in the formation of the internet. So much of the way SEO is structured and all that stuff happened because of the evolution of porn websites. People like to reject it as like, but but like if you're talking about the internet, if you're talking about the evolution of the internet and the history of the internet, it is a pivotal part of the internet that you have to include like literally for educational purposes. Again, another website without SSL. This was the original r slash place. 
There's one million pixels and one dollar per pixel. Dang, dude, this is, you had to have like a decent chunk of money to put something like this over here. These, these are scammers right here. Free hosting. Again, you look at like the way modern websites are. Like this is every modern website. Oh, e-commerce websites, all the same things over and over and over again, black and white and the same like garbage design again this is not like a design you know but like okay look at the top part here this is definitely like it's re it's extremely reminiscent of like old internet this was such a good idea man a million dollars just like that it's so easy this doesn't take that much marketing at all once it starts to get to get going like a bunch of people would hop on it liquor win so many of these are scams dude so many of these are like slot machine like gambling free 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 money free pixel cheap whatever how does free grab you easy money and then you see these like free pixels what they're talking about is they're offering the pixels that are in this spot for free but really it's not free they'll have you go through some website and then scam you in one way or another take your data uh and then they won't actually give you the pixels advertise on my million dollar ad page okay so this is a different one. Oh yeah no i'm not doing none of that I wonder what would happen if this was made today. Would it just be a bunch of porn videos everywhere? Hey, drugs, what is this? Date tonight, wow, yeah, no, I think if this was made today, it would just be like all scam, all porn websites. Bro, the world is changing. I don't know what this is, but I wanna watch it, but it's like, it's probably gonna talk about some Minecraft nostalgia and things like that. You think about like, you notice everywhere now, you'll notice like how many people are like reminiscent about the old days on YouTube or just the internet in general. Like back in the day, back in the day, we didn't have Caleb Presley back in the day we had eric andre and i guess we still have eric andre but he's, he's just a shell of his former self there are new new like occasionally i'll see like uh, somebody will make a video like eric andre out of context which is kind of relevant eric andre by himself is already eric andre out of context there's no need to make any of those videos but they pop off well that's all i got okay bye guys